So we're here to solve this cockro by Prasanna Sashadri called Sweet 16. You can see through its handcrafted design the central diagonal of all 16 clues. It's actually also set up to take uh, some of the extremes of 16s into well takes. So 16 is a forced sum in two ways. When it's just two digits long, it's seven with nine. And when it's five digits long, it's one, two, three, four, six. And some of the things I'm seeing on this longer form, um, we have some cells where we have a particular um, large digit that has to be used, for instance, the four or six here. Uh, on a 20, we have to put at least three near it, and on this 20, we have to do the same, and so we get some breakdowns like so. I've got another seven, nine I can mark in. I've got a seven, nine I can mark in here, and a nine, uh, 23 and three cells is nine plus eight plus six, so a nine has to be here, and actually coming down from the 16 clue, six, which we said is a, a, the largest in a 16 and five cells, has to go there. That puts an eight. Um, this is seven, nine, but the 16 requires seven with one. Puts in nine and seven, puts an eight. Eight with seven is a total of 15, and so that can still be done with two and one, but nine would have been too large if that went in there. We now have 16 coming across uh, with one taken, so this could be nine and six or eight and seven, but we can at least put those sort of values in. Um, the Again, where I can have the remaining things over here be six, seven, eight. Notice that uh, two of them, like the eight would take a one and the seven would take a two. So I have to make this value as large as I can to avoid the one and two already in the row. But in doing that, I make a minimum value go there, which makes a max go here. And that's going to fill in uh, these digits quickly based on the notes I already had. This four eliminates a six. And this four eliminates uh, that last option. So now I'm left with a 9, 8 coming down here, but this 8 intersecting with this 14 coming across has to be 8 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. And uh, put that into the grid. 29 is a number that tends to draw a memory more in 4 cells than in 5 cells. In 4 cells, it's 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 5. But there's a thing I'm seeing here, which is that that max value of that sum, which uses 9, 8, and 7 in the other cells, 5 is the anchoring value. And so look, look at these things. The largest sum I can make across them is 5. And so if you know the rule and how this works in 4 cells, it's showing up here in 5 cells where we have to get 9, 8, 7 plus the 2 digits that sum to 5. This 7 eliminates this to be only the 8, so we get a 7 up top. We're going to have uh, these values of 1, two, 1 and 2. What that means is this cell here can't be a 1 or 2. It could be a 3, but looking to the left, it's going to put another 3 there. It could be 4, 5 now, and that's going to put a 1, 2 in the remaining space. And so now we just have to think about what are what's the total value of the sum coming up. We have a sum of 3. If we added in 4, we'd put a 7 in here, and we put in a 5, we would have a 6 in here. And one of those isn't going to work. And um, the thing I haven't put in the grid is that this 2 to the left puts a 1 in here, which puts in a 2, 1, 2, 4, 7. So that resolves easier than I was making it out to by just keeping track of things better. Um, this 11 coming across can only be as large as an 8 with a 1 and 2 in the remaining cells. Putting that in, you quickly see that you have to put the value that puts an 8 down in the cell and not a 9. Gets rid of this 1. 17 is taken out of this 21, so 1 and 3 are left, and you'll see quickly that the 3 above uh, forces that. 5 and 2 cells is 1 and 4, but the 1s are taken, or 3 and 2, so this is the only option that remains. 6 and 8 puts a 1 in here. We now have 15 coming down and 7 coming across. 15 is normally a 6, 7, 8, 9, but the limit from going across is 6 is both as large and as small as that cell can be, so it must be a 6. That gives us this 1. It gives us that the two, three, fours are going to be coming down here. 27 and three cells going down is nine, seven, and eight. So the eight is what's remaining. Uh, that actually gives us a 24 as a partial sum. So this will be three, four, five. We've got seven, nine, seven, nine here. Notice that a nine would leave behind a five, which is too small. So seven with nine and then one, two, four are what remain. Um, and Notice this 12 can only take that 4. Every other value is too small, so that puts in here, eliminates the last option for some of these cells, uh, gets us to this stage that actually uh, forces this in the grid. This 9 puts in a 3, puts in a 4, puts in a 3, puts in a 4, and this sum is finished with a 7. So a lot of quick flow, but really min-max flow and use of these 16 clues a whole lot. Hopefully you got a sense from the, the maximum values required in these cells and the minimum values in these, other ways this intersection happened. 
sort of this flow into this part of the grid and this flow out of this part of the grid where we're really using some min-max locations. Like once we had this as nine or eight, I had to put a minimum here to work for this clue, but then once the nine were here, you had to put a maximum here to get this eight, which then came across, gave those one three. So lots of this hand design flow that you could get to work from this corner out and through to the rest of the grid. So elegant puzzle from Persona. Hopefully you got a sense of how to solve it through this video, and we'll see you again soon.